The new thinking is around circularity. The idea of circularity is the circulation of materials at their highest value mm. for the longest period of time. And when you design with circular systems in mind, you are thinking about the end at the, at the beginning, meaning what's going to happen to this product that we're right. making? What's right. going to happen to this house that we're re that we're designing at the end of life? Can any of these things be reused again? Can they be made into something else? Can you mm -hmm. take and you send the furniture back to the manufacturer and they'll repair it or even keep it and resell it to somebody else? There are companies that do that. Hello, this is Izumi Tanaka. I am a green realtor and the host of this podcast, Home Green Homes. About a year ago, I interviewed Katie Story, a founder of Good Future Design Alliance, which she created to educate the professionals in the building and designing industry to reduce the massive waste this industry generates. Today, Catherine Sorter, the new executive director, gives us the update on the organization's mission, as well as some practical tips when designing, redesigning, or renovating homes, or even when we need to replace a piece of furniture to help reduce our waste. Here's Catherine. Here we go, Catherine. Thank you so much. And so you can you can briefly tell us a little bit of a background about the Good Future Design Alliance. We are calling GFDA, and, and I know you have prepared a deck for us, so you can start sharing your slides and tell me about GFDA. Great. Well, I really appreciate being here today. Um, we have been around for about three. We're going into our fourth year now and uh, very excited. We had started out um, just before COVID. So uh, that was always uh, a little bit hard to get a new organization off the ground, but we are off and running. Um, we are in a movement of of design and build professionals that are committed to uh, adopting low waste practices uh, in the design and build industry. And that goal really is to reduce uh, uh, construction waste for future generations. Uh, people don't really know just how big the problem is, um, but we now have grown from when you probably talked to Katie a couple of years ago to a couple of chapters, but we now <clears throat> have four chapters and uh, members all over the United States and a few from other countries. And they're all what I would call the leaders of this movement. These are the design and build professionals that your audience might want to hire that know about how to adapt low waste practices and uh, make a difference in our uh, health of our climate uh, and our planet and the inhabitants that live on it. Mm -hmm. And so I know you have some really great statistics. Um, let's hear about the, the facts. Sure, absolutely. So yeah. uh, both Katie and I were in the design industry. I was on the um, sales side and Katie was on the design side and I used to work with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of us were kind of appalled at the amount of waste that we would see, not only in sometimes excessive transportation, but also in packaging waste and just the amount of debris that got thrown away. So we, as an organization, started to really look into that to make some sense of it. And like, how big is this problem? Is it just us or, you know, is this, is this more widespread? And the sad facts are that we toss enough furniture away each year to furnish one bedroom apartments for almost 9 million people. Wow. And the other fact is that in landfills, most of the furniture is less than 15 years old. Mm -hmm. So it's really quite sad that we are throwing away perfectly good for, uh, furniture um, when we could, you know, use those resources to uh, for a much better cause. Um, the other thing is just textiles that we discard just from furniture manufacturing could um, provide pillows for about half the people on the planet. Wow. The waste in textiles, you probably heard about the fashion industry coming <laughs> a lot mm -hmm. of scrutiny because it's even um, more uh, of an, an issue with um, textile manufacturing, but uh, for, for uh, fabrics and uh, clothing. Mm -hmm. But what people don't realize is that construction waste is second only to um, food waste. 
Uh, so we throw away 500 million tons of construction debris. 90% of that is from demolition alone. Mm. And if we just start there by not decon, you know, by deconstructing and not throwing away so much, we could make a serious dent in the problem. Mm. But people have a hard time relating to 500 million tons. Like, I don't know what that is. Right. Um, <laughs> calculations. Um, it is uh, about a trillion pounds. So what I try to do is I, I ask people, I don't know if you have ever been to Egypt and seen the Great Pyramids, uh, mm -hmm. but the largest one, the Pyramid of Giza, is about the equivalent of a 45-story building. It's two, it's a couple of football fields uh, wide or length and each length uh, of it. Um, and I would like to say that, you know, throwing away one of those uh, would be the equivalent of 500 million tons, but it's wow. not. Wow. It's, it's, it's much more than that. Oh my God. hundred of those. Wow. And this is just in the U.S. and it's just once a year. So just in the U.S.? Yes, and every year. Oh, my so God. This is where we sort of want to take a pause and say, you know, the amount of waste created uh, is an extraordinary and staggering amount. Um, and we have to think about it very carefully. Um, I think the other you know, thing to understand is I, I mentioned um, uh, textile waste for clothing. That's mm -hmm. behind construction waste. So wow. it's third in line. And we know mm -hmm. how much gets discarded from from uh, fabric uh, from making our clothes. So it's a big problem. Uh, we're not here to try to scare people, but we're here to say, hey, we have to pay attention. We should care because there are ways to mitigate this um, mm. if we carefully. Right. Um, before I go to the next question, Catherine, I, I'm just curious if you know this. Um, you said that 5 million tons in within us and mm -hmm. so it that's astounding that's like not including the other part of the world but do you know if us is one of the worst or do you think that the rest of the world you know uh, more developed countries europe and you know some parts of asia and are they are they re producing just as much waste as us do you know we produce the most. Um, you know, uh, China and India are right there with us. Uh, but we, just as a uh, for, as a society, mm -hmm. uh, Americans consume twice as much of what Europe does. Mm. So that means we're throwing out like yeah. we're about yeah. twice. As right, 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 right. It's right. just this mindset um, in America of consumption. Yeah. Right? This is where we have to pay attention to it. And um, it doesn't mean that you can't have new things, but mm -hmm. if you buy things that last longer, then you're not replacing it every three right. to five. Right, it's right. It's making things last longer. It's being more um, careful in your selections and also just asking yourself the hard questions. The hard fact to know is that we can't recycle our way out of this problem. We mm -hmm. really we will run out of landfill uh, waste in the U.S. Uh, landfills uh, mm -hmm. will be full, and we will not have enough space uh, in about sixty years. Mm -hmm. So we have to pay attention to it now. Now, mm -hmm. yeah, sixty so, years is not that long, you know. <laughs> it's it's just time. around the corner. Now, so we are talking about waste and how waste is harmful to our environment as well. But how about our health? Like you know. I'm sure it has some effect on human being and other beings, you know, in the health, health uh, area. Yes, I'm really glad you asked that question because um, I, it's a common refrain that we get from interior designers who, who are working with their clients. And they often say, well, you know, if I ask my cl cl clients what their, um, what their priorities are, like they'd like to reduce waste, but honestly, it's not a top, top priority. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the tops, ha top priorities, however, is the health of my family. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, you know, so the question basically is, is there a connection between construction waste, mm -hmm. climate change, and the health of the people on the planet? Cli mm -hmm. planet? 
excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, and their answer is a resounding yes. And I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, we'll start back with landfill pollution. I already mentioned that uh, we're going to fill up the landfills within 60 years. Um, mm -hmm. But right now, over we are polluting our soil, our water, and our air. And you don't have to live near a landfill to be um, affected by it. Then there's the whole um, issue of uh, emissions. Mm -hmm. So emissions come from a couple of places. Um, they are the carbon emissions when you produce something, the manufacturing, all the energy that goes into manufacturing that new product that you're buying. Mm -hmm. Then there's carbon emissions from when you're shipping a product across the country. Uh, when I was a little girl, I grew up in Los Angeles, where you're <laughs> from. And um, I remember walking home from school because they let us out early because we mm. had smog days. And smog days. Smog days, not snow days, smog days. <laughs> so the sad truth was the air was pretty polluted back then. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my lungs would ache when I'd get home. My mother would let, you know, make me lie down for a while till it passed. We couldn't have recess. So they sent us home. Oh, wow. um, it was that bad back in the 60s. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and then we started to get smart and we cleaned up. We got rid of leaded gas. We got um, catalytic converters. We've done a lot of things to reduce air pollution from mm -hmm. automobiles since then and some manufacturing. But we have a new problem with emissions. We mm -hmm. have something of trapping heat. Mm -hmm. So now we've gotten rid of uh, most of the dirty air, but now we're trapping the heat for, because mm -hmm. of excess carbon emissions. But the real problem is that methane, now you've probably been hearing about it, yes. is even a worse uh, problem because it's 84 times more effective in absorbing the sun's heat than mm. carbon dioxide. Wow. So methane comes from decaying landfills. It comes from cow pastures. So that's why there's this movement to try to reduce the amount of dairy or meat mm -hmm. that we, we consume. So all of those things go into it, which is why we should pay attention to it. But the one that I think that we can all almost have an immediate effect on is the amount of plastic um, that we're discarding. So we dump 10 million tons of plastics into our oceans each year. Now, not all of that is from packaging waste that we generate as a building industry. A lot of it is just our own consumer waste mm -hmm. from plastic bottles and packaging. Mm -hmm. And um, someday, I hope, it's one of our visions that um, more and more plastic packaging material will be replaced by uh, recyclable, returnable um or decompostable mm -hmm. materials. And they're out there and more manufacturers are starting to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. You can ship a product, not necessarily um, bathed in plastic. Uh, uh, one of our members actually uses a decompostable plastic bag to wrap her things in. And um, she brands it very clearly. This is a compost, this is not plastic. It's, you know, it's compostable. Mm -hmm. so people realize that there are products out there, but it took her a long time to find it. Um, but here's the other thing about plastics and why that ties back to health again. Um, did you know that 50% of the oxygen that we breathe comes from the ocean? Mm. So if we're polluting the, the ocean, we're warming the waters, we're killing yeah. off the plant life in right. the oceans that create the oxygen. Right. So that is a big alarm bell as well. Mm -hmm. um, between landfills polluting the soil and the water and plastics polluting our oceans that are generating oxygen and the methane gas and the CO2 kind of creating this uh, heat bubble, we are really doing irreparable uh, damage to the um, planet if we don't start to shift course. And that's mm -hmm. what the whole climate change change movement is about, is about the man-made contributions to mm -hmm. uh, climate warming or planet mm -hmm. warming. And mm -hmm. so, yes, um, there is a connection between health and our climate. Very much so, isn't it? It's like mm -hmm. we don't and think what? about it or we don't take it for granted. You know, we take it for granted, like the air we breathe. 
like who who would think that you know when you're living in in I am living in the mountain and I'm a little bit far from the ocean today and I wouldn't think about the plastic pollution that might be affecting the oxygen I breathe mm -hmm. yeah that yeah that is you know that's something that we all have to become more aware of I agree and the, the, the so all the waste that we are talking about that mm -hmm. comes from the building industry and designing industry and I understand like um, you know a lot of the packagings it contain plastic and and things like that but you know what are the other the ways that we are talking about like, um, and where do they come from other than you know manufacturing process well, <laughs> and construction where, process yeah here's where it can be really valuable for anybody that's watching this uh, webinar um because we it, either if you're a consumer or you're a designer if you're the homeowner or a designer or a developer or an architect or a contractor one third of the waste that we generate as an industry comes mm -hmm. from decisions that are made before the project starts. Mm. Here's where homeowners can take responsibility by being more mindful of this. And we'll get into that in a second. Um, here's where designers and architects can properly select materials and think about what, things that could be salvaged at the beginning of a project. But a lot of it is not making mistakes. So mm -hmm. it's a result of flaws. If we've made a mistake, we've overordered, we didn't communicate properly with the installer, um, uh, there's too much excess that now is going to get thrown away. Mm. All of these types of things go into, um, you know, what um, what constitutes a decision made before it even starts. So right. some it's um, a really complex design that requires excess materials just for a small piece of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can, uh, mitigate some of that. But a lot of it is coordination and communications. Um, so things get done on time. There's uh, many manufacturers that will do just in time um, manufacturing, which definitely saves waste. There's a movement about 3D printing mm -hmm. in um, both from from a, a concrete to furniture manufacturing that reduces a lot of um, waste and then um, a lot one third or actually 30 percent of all construction not just the waste mm -hmm. is actually rework so that means you've changed your mind you didn't like the way that turned oh, out oh wow you got to rip mm -hmm. it out, start over. Well, the guy mm. ripping it out is on a time schedule. You're an hour in a hurry and, right. and he has to discard that stuff. He's not going to take the time to deconstruct it, see what boards can be salvaged, whatever, right. the windows, et cetera, that you just pulled out. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, if you don't make mistakes, if you can minimize them as much as possible, some of that will, you know, that's a way to reduce those kinds of rework mistakes but a lot of rework comes from just not planning carefully right you know, if people would take more time in the planning process and carefully lay out their steps um, and work very closely with their designers and communicate and spend more time thinking about how a room or a home is going to be remodeled you can reduce the amount of rework and then mm -hmm. sometimes rework is just because you just didn't like the finish. Um, okay, maybe that, you know, maybe you could live with it, maybe not. Maybe it doesn't require a whole ripping out. Try to think really carefully about mm. But that's a real easy way. So between a third of all waste coming from things starting at the beginning and, you know, again, careful planning and communication is a huge part of it. Making sure all your documents are accurate, make, making sure all the communications are accurate. But then rethinking the rework and trying not to make mistakes um, to avoid that. So mm -hmm. that's a big part of it. Um, and as an organization, what the GFDA is about is really connecting the dots. So I'm big on communication. And so the whole mm -hmm. genesis of our organization was to connect interior designers and architects and contractors and manufacturers. 
because a lot of what I just pointed to, these, these mistakes that are happening are often those gaps where those little orange arrows are, those gaps in between um, the communication tri uh, you know, uh, uh, sphere. So if we get interior designers, architects, contractors on board early on in a project, and they're all on the same page with the same goals in mind, then the communications will go more smoothly. And mm -hmm. uh, so what we're trying to do is educate all of these people um, with courses uh, that we're developing and uh, consulting practices and partnerships with other organizations that um, uh, either provide services or great products or a place to buy or donate your things. Mm -hmm. And then just this full amount of resource sharing within our market. And for homeowners or developers, you know, we we want to encourage you to work with um, trained professionals in this area because it makes your life so much easier if you um, know of a designer or an architect that from that adopt these practices and do it every day, and that's just the way they approach their their project. It will go as fast. Things might may not cost as much as you think. And there are often tax benefits from um, resource donations, mm -hmm. especially on higher end projects, which people aren't realizing is that the more that you salvage and you can get a tax write off that could offset the extra cost of a potential deconstruction of an entire building. Right. The other thing that um, design, the design team can do, and again, this all flows up to the client making the decisions, right? Exactly. Um, is I know some designers that work with two contractors. They have mm. deconstruction experts and they have the builder. Mm. And because sometimes they're not the same people. Um, often we're trying to educate more builders to um, embrace deconstruction and know how to do it right. Um, but some uh, designers say, look, I need to do this now. So they have their deconstruction team um, that can assess, get a price, and then identify the products that come out and actually will do it. And then the and then salvaged. And then um, the builder will come in and build the new the new um, right. item. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how that can work as a partnership. So it's right. super important that, um, uh, that we do this. You so, know, so... So I have to stop you for a minute. I, um, all of these people that you had listed, designers, architects, um, contractors, and manufacturers, and like you said, it comes down to the client's decision, right? Yes. So it, whether it's a homeowner or building owner, um, they are the ones that are ultimately making the decisions. So how how can we, as lay people living in the home or you know walking in the building or whatever how how i mean it's our job you and i have been doing this you know uh, effort to educate the world about you know reducing waste and whatnot so i mean it just feels like such a huge task or it's almost daunting overwhelming and what do we how what do you uh suggest in terms of how can we as people who are not designer, architect, contractor, and manufacturer, what can we do to be part of this movement? Uh, again, great question. And one that, again, we get asked a lot by interior designers in particular and um, architects is that they feel like their clients um, don't, as we talked about, may not care enough, but we know that people out there that do care but mm -hmm. they don't want the project to be more expensive or take more time mm -hmm. but i always say that if you're planning from the beginning to do it right. the right way that it won't take more time because time is a matter of expectation right. so if you're already building in the time to do the deconstruction mentally you're prepared for that right mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. maybe three weeks to your project so you just have to start early yeah. um I also want to remind people that little steps do add up. <clears throat> um, when you're working with a team, they can find small areas that you, that can make a difference. We talked about this um, before we started, which is like maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, you can 
find um, a few pieces of furniture that uh, you can use in another room uh, mm -hmm. or the upholster or or reconstruct uh, um, you know, or re reupholster it or rebuild it. Uh, and uh, a good professional can guide you through that process. Uh, mm -hmm. then their selection of materials can also um, be something that you you won't have to sacrifice necessarily mm -hmm. quality um, or design because they have their resources about really good materials. There are tile manufacturers that are B Corps, which mm -hmm. means they've got the extra mile to mm -hmm. um, manufacture sustainably. Um, and uh, that's a huge, there are many companies like that in all mm -hmm. aspects. There mm -hmm. are furniture companies that um, uh, package in low waste methods or design to disassemble. So these are the types of things that are um, steps that homeowners can embrace from the beginning of a project and realize that the, all those little steps add up. And right. that's why we, we want you to think also about donations at the beginning. So there's many things you're going to want to throw out. Mm -hmm. um, Instead of just discarding them and having your contractor haul it away, he's likely going to take it to the dump Right. to pay for a dumping fee, what they call tipping fees in construction. So you might as well donate the, the uh, usable pieces and get a tax benefit from that mm -hmm. than paying the contractor to dump it. Yeah. Um, so those are just a, a few uh, examples of ways that homeowners can make a difference. The selection of materials, low mm -hmm. fee things that are manufactured locally, save mm -hmm. on carbon emissions, and you can get them faster um, okay. and, and with less packaging waste, right? If it's coming from um, a few miles away versus a few thousand miles away, just imagine the amount of um, less packaging waste and, and savings of time too. So those are just a few examples. Thank you so much. I mean, as I was sharing with you that uh, I recently had to... Uh, replace a sofa and I am um, although I did my research to find the sustainably built uh, product I am now regretting that I didn't get the older one even though mm -hmm. I I did uh, give away the old sofa to someone who needed new uh, sofa but um, I wish that I had talked to you before I <laughs> before I did that <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, before I get into my whole thing on re uh, reupholstering, because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about that, I want to take um, you through just a few other things that sure. I think help sort of bring this all mm -hmm. to the full circle. So, yeah. number one is a stark truth: we have to consume less. Mm -hmm. So, perfect place to start is what can you live with? What do you still love? And let's mm -hmm. give it a life. Right. Or if you do want to get rid of it, let's find a new home for it. There right. are there's our people in um in uh, they're aging out of um foster care uh homes that are getting their own homes but have mm -hmm. no furniture. There's mm -hmm. wonderful organizations in every market that are providing uh furniture for um people. Mm -hmm. One thing that homeowners can do that I would hope they do um or pay attention to is why do we need to put in the temporary kitchen when we're just going to remodel it in about five more years? Because mm -hmm. we if you could just tell your viewers to do one thing, don't put in temporary anything. Just right. save the money a little bit longer and live with it. Give it a coat of paint or something, repair something that you don't like. But when you're ready to remodel, put in the absolute best products that you can so mm -hmm. they will last a long time. Mm -hmm. as, I went, as I said in the beginning of my presentation, furniture that's in landfills, appliances that are in landfills are less than 15 years old. Yeah. So if we could stop doing the... Um, uh, if we could be more mindful, if we will, mm -hmm. you know, most of us care about this stuff, but we have to really start to walk the talk, right? Right, right. Um, so this comes, this goes to really shifting our thinking. Mm -hmm. And I want to make this point. This is the way we do things now. It's called linear thinking. We take some material, we make it into something, and then when we're done with it, we throw it away. So mm -hmm. it's a linear approach, take, make, make waste. 
The new thinking is around circularity. The idea of circularity is the circulation of materials at their highest value mm. for the longest period of time. And when you design with circular systems in mind, you are thinking about the end at the, at the beginning, meaning what's going to happen to this product that we're right. making? What's right. going to happen to this house that we're re that we're designing at the end of life? Can any of these things be reused again? Can they be made into something else? Can you mm -hmm. take and you send the furniture back to the manufacturer and they'll repair it or even keep it and resell it to somebody else? There are companies that do that. Mm -hmm. so, Circular thinking is starting with the end in mind. You plan, you design, and you construct very carefully um, using the absolute highest quality materials possible. You are always maintaining and restoring things along the way through the life cycle of the, the whole major portion of the time you are living in it or using that product. Um, mm -hmm. Keep it just because a part breaks, um, I had a microwave where the handle actually broke off. Mm. And I'm sure there was a lot of people thought, oh, there's a part broken. Let's just rip it out and get a new one. Yeah. I just called and looked online and believe it or not, I could buy a new door. Oh, so wow. Got <laughs> a new door with a handle on it. And we just put it on ourselves. Mm. Um, I restored lots of failing appliances just yeah. for, sometimes for budget reasons. And sometimes people just don't go there. They think right. oh, I'll buy a new one. Like, mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. right. Um, you know, just keep repairing things right. that's possible. And, yeah. And should take responsibility yeah. then when it is time to um remodel or um or buy a new place that is really beyond um in habitable um <laughs> look at this deconstruction so think mm. of construction not you know destruction mm -hmm. or demolition uh, and we've talked a lot about it, that already and then the salvaging of materials so there really right. are um that's the idea of a circular approach mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so the other things I tell people are to really educate yourself. Um, all these things that we're talking about today, there are many, many resources on all of them. So start early and find that team that you want to mm -hmm. work with, all those mm -hmm. professionals that are part of the GFGA, um, and get one that you like a lot and have them build their team of resources and other professionals around that. So educate yourself, get agreement early about waste reduction priorities. Um, what we said at the beginning of our talk, which is go through each room and identify what you can salvage, what could be uh, given away mm -hmm. uh, and where your priorities are. And then plan to keep track of your waste mit minimization. This is really important because it'll serve as um, reinforcement. It's like, oh my gosh, we got that locally. So we, you know, we saved on carbon emissions. Um, there was no little to no packaging because it was blanket wrapped. Um, or we didn't throw away all of this whole room of furniture. We actually rehomed it. Um, so that's great. Look at there's 15 pieces of furniture that found mm -hmm. a new home. Mm -hmm. That's the type of thing you keep um, track of. It serves as a, a reinforcement for what you're doing and motivation to try a little bit harder every time. And if you're a design professional, it's really important to share those kinds of things with your new clients too, about how you can get there in case they're somewhat resistant. It's like, no, it's not hard. It all adds up and every little bit um, matters. If we, mul it's a full force multiplier. If everybody listening to this and all their designer and their designer friends in just Los Angeles started to adopt even small steps, and then we got every designer in every major city, and then we got everybody in the United States to do it, just imagine small steps add up. Sure. Uh, and then we talked a lot about planning early. I can't, uh, and carefully, I can't stress that enough. If you slow the process down and realize that this is a priority at the beginning of the process, you will save um, problems at the end. You can't be in the middle of a project and say, oh, I want to reduce waste now. You really kind of have to start uh, early on. Mm. Um, so now we're going to get to your sofa question because I really <laughs> <laughs> as they wrap up here. Um, sure. There are organizations like Cherish and First Dibs that have saved literally and other online marketplaces that have saved literally millions of uh, pounds of furniture from going into landfills. It's mm -hmm. a huge, 
we we are big proponents of shopping for uh, vintage or just um, gently used pieces first. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and you can add vintage treasures to your home because it adds a color, more colorful and rich story to it. And every piece of furniture not only has its own um, unusual shape or or period that it represents, but it, there were craftsmen behind it. Mm -hmm. So you're supporting and honoring that legacy of the craftsmen that built that piece. Um, let's restore some please pieces. So you have a sofa. You thought it was just beyond repair. You thought I don't want to, but it fits in my room, but I <laughs> saggy, the, the saggy um, material and the cushions. Well, here's how to think about restoring sofas. Um, if it works in your scheme, if it is a good fit and you've always really enjoyed it, but it's just worn, right? Mm -hmm. You should consider that um, and finding a really good refurbish, uh, refurbishment, refurbishment source and a reupholster because reupholsters can literally rebuild the whole thing except the frame. And sometimes mm -hmm. they'll repair frames if there are some things missing mm -hmm. um, or maybe the feet need to be uh, resanded and restained. But they'll re they'll redo the cushions and any springs or anything like that, so you can have entirely new cushions, um, at, or or add padding to it, and you get a new um, uh, fabric that you pick that goes with the new uh, scheme. This is a this is similar to buying a custom made piece. Mm -hmm. So don't think of um, reupholstering necessarily as a cheap way out. It's not. It is like building a new custom piece for your home. The beauty of it is you already loved it and now you get to enjoy it in a new, uh, with a facelift, if you will. Right. And, and, um, and it already fits in your, in your room. So scale is uh, super important. And more importantly, you didn't uh, uh, buy a new piece that um, has all the embodied carbon in it right. from manufacturing and shipping, right? right. right. Not to mention the off gassing and things like that that come in with a new piece. There'll be a little of that with fabrics, but not mm -hmm. small fabrics. If you mm -hmm. source um, uh, natural fabrics, they last longer, like wool and hemp and linen. Uh, these are all wonderful um, materials that can be um, uh, that don't that last longer with the right maintenance uh, and um, don't and decompose uh, naturally a hundred years from now when when uh, we're all gone and it ends up. <laughs> Um, uh, so anyway, does that answer your question about, uh, sofa? yes, yes. So, so, um, I will, I have a couple more questions for you. Um, yes, secondhand furniture for store, for, uh, furniture for kids and, uh, use appliances for the second home or ADU and they all make sense. So you mentioned, uh, that you have four chapters now, um, mm -hmm. and, and, and so GFDA is an organization serving those professionals, designers, architects, and contractors and manufacturers. But can um, homeowners or anybody like myself can come to your organization and look for uh, designers, uh, architects, and whatnot uh, who are within your organization that is uh, really um, uh, embracing this practice of reducing waste yes um so i would say right now we are um we're for a member only organization uh mm -hmm. because we do some education and provide resources for design professionals to work mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. but we get asked this a lot and we are working on some um, educational modules that will be available to consumers uh, but if you're looking for a design professional, just contact us directly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and tell us where you live and we'll give you a few names of people to contact. Uh, I we'll see. start there. Someday we'll probably um, have uh, the ability to share the directory with consumers too. Mm -hmm. where we're, you, if you're not a um, design professional, but you want to pay the membership fee to get access to all of it, knock yourself out. Mm -hmm. uh, you can most consumers you know would only use it once but right. um, i would say you know you, you could join um but uh you might want to just find it faster if you just contact me which is why i have my contact information up there yes and i will put that in the show note as well but here's my last question catherine um for those of those people who are not 
able to or who have who don't have the means to hire professionals in the design field or building field, or mm -hmm. they just want to, you know, do it there on their own. Do you have any resources that you can share for people to look for? You know, we know about Cherish, um, mm -hmm. you know, Salvation Armies or uh, Habitat for Humanities may mm -hmm. have some of the uh, upcycled material or uh, recycled material. Do you have any other resources that you can share with people? Yeah, there are other organizations like Renovation Angel um, mm. that will take um, basically everything in your house. <laughs> mm. Okay. Really what they focus on is kitchens um, mm -hmm. and they can literally come in and take your entire kitchen out. Oh, wow. And, including the cabinets, providing they're in decent, you know, somewhat decent mm -hmm. shape, um, mm -hmm. can't find a new home for them. Mm -hmm. The thing with the other point I'll make, um, and, and so what you do have to do is look for your local resources. Right. There are many, they're popping up all the time. The problem mm -hmm. we have is to keep these people in business and doing the right thing. We also have to buy from them. Yeah. So, I say consider going to Renovation Angel if you don't want to spend a lot of money on appliances. You would be surprised at the quality of appliances they're being pulled out of really high end homes mm. just because the homeowners are tired of them or the or the size doesn't fit and they're putting in five or ten year old appliances that are really high end. Mm -hmm. If you go to some of these places, you might find them there, mm -hmm. and then you just saved probably fifty percent at mm -hmm. least. Mm -hmm. on a very extensive um, refrigerator mm -hmm. or range. Mm -hmm. um, so renovations, another one, there's another company called uh, Revital East that, you know, you can, no matter where you live, it's a, it's a place to get your old furniture um, restored. Uh, but you just have to, I always say, ask your neighbors uh, right. what donation places there are, Google it in your mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to do it. Um, mm -hmm. Go on um, if you just you know look for your local resources the thing with salvage is it generally is local mm -hmm. um, there are some um, online marketplaces too mm -hmm. where you can buy and sell um, one of them is a member of ours which is called recapture it um, and then there's a large company um, mostly on the uh, architectural material side that is uh, also a called reaply r-h-e-a-p-l-y Mm -hmm. com. Um, and uh, they are, again, they, they espouse, you know, buying from, you know, sinks and faucets and lighting fixtures, like why spend top dollar on things that are perfectly good, because right. people with, you know, high end things, if you're working with a vintage home, like mm -hmm. recap, a lot of um, vintage 1950 homes, and the doors are, you know, they have a certain style to them, right. too, in the windows sometimes. So um, there are there are resources out there yeah. just for them and keep track of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're still stuck, um, pop us a note. Um, there's another email we have a general mailbox, which is hello at the GFDA. Mm -hmm. Pop us a note, tell us what you're looking for, and we'll do our best to help you find it if you're still struggling. But that's another reason um, for you know keeping your little notebook and tracking um, or your document on your laptop, tracking your waste. We are um, one of our initiatives is to try to work through um, and develop a tool uh, that mm. um, you know builders and designers and homeowners can use to track waste. But we're still a year or so away from that. But we'll get there. Well, I really appreciate all the work that that. Well, Katie started, and then you are, you know, carrying on. It's and and the organization is growing quickly, and I'm really glad to hear that. And and so for the audience who didn't get to see the uh, the slides because this linked uh, audio wise, uh, can you mention the website that people can find you? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, yes, uh, for those just listening, uh, if you go to the GF da.com you will find us uh, mm -hmm. it'll take you through um, uh, what we're all about um, there's many articles in our blog section called the three r's blog 
referring to recycle, re, reuse, reduce, reuse, reduce. recycle, mm -hmm. the three R's. Um, and we write an article a couple times a month, and those are open to the public too. Mm -hmm. So you can actually get some ideas on types of materials to pick, some alternative materials that are available, uh, what's um, and some innovations that are going on, and um, that is available to anyone. And then, um, you know, if you have further questions, you can find us there through our contact us button. Great. Thank you so much, Catherine. This was so informative and very educational. I hope uh, people get a lot of great ideas and inspiration from you. Thank you so much, Shizumi. It was great to be here. Uh, all I can say in closing is just try a little bit better every time. Mm -hmm. And it will add up. And it's like exercising a muscle. Um, exactly. We have to develop new habits. And exactly all we have to do is keep practicing yeah thank you so much Catherine this was Izumi yes. Tanaka with Home Green Homes podcast thank you so much and until my next episode